Hi guys, and in today's video we're going to be talking about sinus lifting. So, a sinus lift may have been recommended by your dentist or implant dentist if you want to have dental implants and teeth replaced to the back of your top jaw. So, in this video we're going to be talking about what a sinus lift is, roughly how it's carried out, and everyone's got their own kind of techniques on this, and thirdly, afterwards, what can you expect? What is the kind of aftercare and recovery? So, I hope you find it useful. Okay, so to understand what a sinus lift actually is, we need to understand a little bit about the anatomy of the head. And there's a couple of air, air pockets or air sinuses. Um, the easiest one to kind of visualize is right behind your nose. So behind your nose, and th there's a channel which connects your nose all the way down to your throat, and that's called a nasal cavity. So it's just a chamber with nothing in it, and it just lets air pass straight down. Now, if you go to the side of the nose and underneath your eye, then wait, if you put your finger on your cheekbone, inside your cheekbone there's another cavity and that's called the maxillary air sinus. So a lot of our bones have air, air sinuses, especially the bones in the, in the skull. It helps make them lighter and possibly stronger as well. So these, these air, air sinuses are kind of a lining, they've got lining with um, a kind of a skin on the inside because the nasal cavity is connected to the maxillary air sinus. There's a small hole connecting those two as well. So why does that affect the teeth and implants? Well, towards the, the back of the, the jaw, where you've got your big, your molar teeth, those, the roots of those teeth come very close to the maxillary air sinus. And what happens is when you have one of these teeth removed, or if the teeth have been removed for a long time, the, the bottom of this air sinus can move its position. So whereas the roots of the, the sinus, the roots of the teeth were holding the sinus up, when the roots are removed, the air sinus can drop down. And the problem is this actually reduces the height of bone available for dental implants. So where your dentist might be comfortable with 10, 12, 15 millimeters of bone, it can drop down to almost nothing. Sometimes it can be, the bone on your, your cheekbone can be almost paper thin. So what we want to do is increase the amount of bone uh, which you've lost from inside your cheekbone. And the way to, to do this, well there's a whole bunch of ways, but the most complicated way to do this is to make a little hole to your sinus from not outside your cheek but inside next to where your teeth were because that's where we need to increase the bone and when you make this this little window what you see is this little skin which is on the inside of the the, the air sinus and this skin can gently be pushed up and filled with a bone grafting material then it's all closed up and you have stitches and all of that and over time what happens is that your own bone grows into this um, bony material and it becomes a solid mass, ready for putting dental implants in. And you can then choose a much larger implant because you, you've grafted the area, you know that you've got good solid bone there. The end goal is always to, to have enough bone to provide a good, strong implant in position, and therefore, whatever you have on the implant, whether it's a single tooth or a bridge or anything like that, you know you've got that confidence that it's going to last as long as it possibly can. So I've just described the most complicated way of having a, a sinus lift. Not everybody needs to gain 10, 12 millimeters of bone. It may be that you actually only need two or three millimeters of bone. So there are other ways of, of doing this. And there are really cool drills that, you, that your dentist may have when he's making the hole for the implant, it can push the bone up and lift up the, the floor of the sinus by a couple of millimeters without even having to, to really do a sinus lift in the traditional way. So this is really cool. It doesn't add any extra time onto your treatment and it doesn't, you don't have the, all the kind of after effects with a, a traditional sinus lift. So let's talk about the aftercare on this. What I've described probably sounds horrible. It's in, it is quite a lot of treatment and it takes quite a lot of skill on the, on the implant dentist's kind of side. And with all the skill in the world, you're still gonna get swelling and bruising. And the bruising is quite often, is, is quite significant and it, is, it can be quite scary if you're not prepared for it. So expect one or two weeks of quite a lot of bruising on the face. 
and this bruising can kind of just like trickle down over the over the weeks this is this is quite common swelling is common as well surprisingly pain isn't as bad as it looks so when you look in the mirror people will or when people see you they'll assume that you you're in a lot of pain but actually it doesn't hurt as much as they're they're kind of expecting and normal painkillers normally keeps everything kind of under control with anything surgical there's always a risk of infection so if you're worried about that uh, if you've had this treatment and you're worried that it may be infected get to your get to the guy who did your your sinus lift kind of as soon as possible to get that sorted out so in general this is actually a very safe and predictable treatment what i mean by that is when when we do it the, the risk of infection and complication is actually quite low and we know that a good amount of bone is almost definitely guaranteed so that's that's the whole reason for for doing this and we know that with more bone we can use bigger implants and the success rate is usually better so thanks for watching and i'll see you soon take care